I am curious though, on a more meta level, you know, you're bringing up these great points of like, it, you know, you guys are on the plat, you're the platform, you're really building the base. So how it evolves, right. I'm really curious, you know, I'm, I'm personally really loving the Lumen OS um, s- kind of design philosophy. Like I, I feel like I see where you guys are going, maybe not entirely, but I, I really see, and I'm like, this is great. I want to participate in this, uh, in this framework. I remember, I, I think I like caught you after your talk and maybe like, you talked about different stuff and on one of those things yeah we had an awesome conversation after leapcon i remember that yeah and i and i was very curious what you kind of still thought or are thinking around the idea of like the operating system as being something that's facilitating the creation of itself for lack of a better phrase um Interesting. like so in this case you know if there were features to this environment that we wanted to add we merely could add them um in a tangible way because we're embodied right so we no longer have to do any abstraction when we want something that is in an, in this world since we are inside the computer now and um, merged together yeah, yeah. so i'm just curious That's like great. you were so receptive to that and had some cool like you would already thought down this road a little bit it seemed like so i was just curious if you, well, I don't know. I mean, in hypothetical, I think after our conversation, you've definitely thought more about it. It's very, like you mentioned, as we may think earlier, and it's very, it's a very Van of our Bush kind of like <laughs> thought, you know, like what, um, uh, of sort of, um, of building that, that space. And it totally is in line with our high level vision that I think everyone in this field shares, which is harmonizing digital things and physical things like the best of the material world, the best of the immaterial world. Um, that's super exciting. Um, but I would love to hear more about how, what your latest thinking is on that. Oh, well, I mean, it's, as I play with the sort of modular nature of the Lumen OS and cause you know, again, like you're saying, hypothetically, you know, yeah, we can think about that, but you know, I've been involved with enough systems at the smaller scale, even to know that it's one thing to say, let's let the user make the future, but it's another to actually let them do it. The reason we have so much yeah, goopy exactly. code and stuff and, and, you know, hard wizardry is because that's still what computers are like. But it seems like the more that computers are able to, uh, you know, there's a, to me, there's a parallel side to what we call artificial intelligence, which is that you want to embody it and give it interfaces, but you also need it to have self-awareness. And I mean, that so literally, right, where it needs to understand what it is all the way from the physics of what it is into, uh, you know, as much as we could grant our own invention such that it could help us um, troubleshoot it. Uh, for instance, my totally. friend told me he saw a DARPA presentation they did at DEF CON some couple years ago where they had a machine debug its own machine code. So wow. the machine was able to reach that's around nice. and yeah, and it did a better job. So to me, that's a signal than, you know, than reference a baseline. To me, that's a signal of if we start uh, stacking AI inside of the middle layers of the operating system and enable it to find our intention so what we mean to do, and then it can remove steps and other optimizations that we know that actually AI is good at is the optimizations and start employing it in the middle of the stack of the technology. Now, I understand that what I'm saying could mean that everyone's patents are ripped apart and all sorts of other things. Like, I get it. I know that there's a lot of other complexities at work, but just purely speaking as, you know, uh, some passionate people about the future of computing and what that means, I don't even know how much longer we'll be able to hold out before uh, everything starts to be turned into this soup of possibility. And then it becomes like, when you're saying, you know, we say things like big data and we, we have to understand like living in a, in a world where there's a resource we call big data, as you mentioned, the immaterial world. Well, you know, it, it's still a material, it, it's very real. And so then we work with it and representing it as aspects and letting it re-represent itself as all aspects which are possible to be, then means that it is a limitless meta-medium, as has been described by these thinkers who came before. You know, before it got form, it was so meta, right? And then people started iterating it down. So I'm hoping we can also then now explode it beyond its um, specific applications and let the computational uh, aspect become a substrate for all abstraction all the time. Uh, in any way that is possible. And I think uh, Alicia was really receptive to that. And she started running down some roads of uh, after afterwards and, and even during her talk um, Sweet. where she was saying, uh, and I, I talked to her briefly after, like even something as mundane as, you know, when you reach your hand into this interface, right now that's a hard-coded reality. You know, I put my hand in front of the thing and it, it's going to do some hard-coded thing. But if the machine has a model of my intention, it knows something about what I'm looking at, something about what I'm doing, something about what I'm like, and where I'm looking even, 
it can start to really be able to guess what I'm trying to do and build up correct responses, um, which I then give it feedback, you know, by basically training my helper brain, for lack of a better phrase. Um, And this could really become the way that the machinery starts to sort itself out, too, because I'd really love to free us beyond the specific drudgery of the the writing and let us be more of um, infinite storytellers. Andy Serkis loved that. He was like, oh, yeah, dude, like... (laughs) I told him I told him some of this and he was like cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, totally. I mean like when when people I think when like mass culture, you know, popular culture thinks about AI, they think of like, you know, her and like <laughs> other like movies where there's like a sort of an embodied like agent, but like invisible agents that are like artificially intelligent that are behind the scenes as exactly like they, they they sort of optimize a certain part of a really complex software stack or their services that sort of reach us help us complete tasks but we never interface with them directly like that that's so interesting i think to nerds like us yeah well <laughs> yeah. it's it's wild because i i've gotten parallel i'm into magic leap and i'm into gardening so at the same time, and I'm going to merge them together. And, well, this is what I'm, I'm getting at is I think the more I study plants and the more I watch them grow in, especially a parallel to writing some software and playing with this stuff, I realize that the plants, they're just always alive um, and they're, they create their own environment. They become their own intelligent um, co-created environment. So we start to think about when you're living inside of a more computational reality you can take those metaphors, I think, and have the computer be sort of always shifting, always changing, always trying to find the best way to get, uh, you know, our metaphorical son in this case. But, you know, because you're in the computer, it can be anything. So finding um, different, you know, uh, needs or desires for the, you know, introducing a kind of agency that has some specific, it's going to be a tomato plant, for instance, is the tomato plant's agency, yet it has so much freedom within that overall agency to be specifically um, in, invoking its little tomato will. And so, you know, the, the code behaving in such a way to me just seems like, you know, basically, you know, we, there's a lot of talk cause I'm, I consider myself a really meta designer. So I'm always touching all sorts of stuff, which means I've been like starting businesses, I guess, cause that's like the most meta design you can do right now. I don't know. Um, but it is that we, there's there's just so much work that we would need to do to really build this feature we want if we are to build it ourselves like by hand but if we start to invoke it to build itself with us and more of a co-creative reality um even like my favorite design example is in india those villages where they over 30 years induce the growth of a tree root over a river and it creates a bridge which lasts for 400 years so yes it took 30 years but you know I think there's a lot to be learned from the way that we used to live inside of and still can live inside of a living system with its own volition, which will do things that we don't necessarily or wouldn't have literally thought of. We don't maybe even like, but there's a there's a wisdom to it that's of its own thing. So it's kind of about us, you know, letting go of control of the computer, too. And maybe, you know, not to like cause controversy, but stepping into a more feminine stance when it comes to uh how these creations make themselves uh, you know because there's a lot of work to do otherwise those are some ideas that i'm going to be thinking about for a while i love those analogies of the sort of like the environment building and the growth of plants and how that relates to what we're all doing here in this medium like that's that is like very that's very (laughs) thought-provoking It's and it's beautiful to watch people make these plant uh, simulators too in it. I think it's fascinating. I think there's plants totally. on the mind it's a little a bit. Metaphor. Yeah. That interesting a plant design movement. I love it. Oh man, that's so cool. I need to write this stuff down. Hang on. I'm, <laughs> a I'm gonna take some notes. Hang on. Well, that's so cool. I can see you go look for your notebook. That's cool. That's cool. Um, hang on. All right. Captured. 